Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Muhammad Qasim's channel where we are discussing Muhammad Qasim's dreams uh, about the uh, end times, closer to the end times. And we are continuing our topic today uh, from our discussion last week where we discussed about the situation of Pakistan uh, before Ghazwa Hin. A little bit of an uh, overview of what we have been talking uh, about in this series. Uh, we discussed previously that the uh, Malhama uh, Tul Kubra is going to occur uh, and uh, the Ghazwa Hind event is part of Malhama Tul Kubra. Uh, and during this event, uh, Turkey and Saudi Arabia is lost, which are the two castles of Pakistan. Uh, and then Islam rises again from uh, Pakistan, which is the last castle of Islam. Uh, so the main event that happens uh, that brings back the revival of the Muslims uh, starts from Ghazwa Hind. That's why it has a very important place um, in, in the events that are going to happen closer to Qayyama. Uh, and then after that, uh, after Ghazwa Hind, uh, the Malhamat al-Kubra uh, concludes where Muslims gain victory. Um, and uh, after those events is when uh, the Jal's arrival comes. So uh, we will begin today, inshallah, from uh, our ongoing discussions. Um, first of all, I would like to review some hadiths that are surrounding Ghazwa uh, Hind, just so that we get an idea about how important Ghazwa Hind is from a perspective of uh, the hadiths and what important information we can pick up from these hadiths about uh, Ghazwa Hind. Uh, so let's have a look, inshallah. Okay, so uh, one of the first hadiths that uh, I found that uh, I should share with everyone because this hadith actually connects some of the points that we have been discussing previously. Uh, in this hadith, it is narrated that Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, uh, you will attack Arabia. So Arabia is one of the areas that will be attacked and Allah will enable you to conquer it. Uh, then you would attack Persia and uh, Allah would again make you to conquer it. Then you would attack Rome and Allah will enable you to conquer it. Then you would attack the Dajjal. <clears throat> now, in regards to commentary about this hadith, uh, many ulamas have, uh, scholars have different opinions. Uh, some say that some parts of these hadiths have already occurred. Some say that this is uh, a conclusive of events uh, and these hadiths are to be taken um, in conjunction with the other hadiths which uh, talk about the Malhamat al-Kubra and uh, signs of the uh, end times, the major signs of Qayyama. Uh, from a perspective of our analysis uh, and Muhammad Qasim's dream, we see this from the latter point of uh, argument of the scholars uh, where we know, the, uh, and as we discussed in uh, our last uh, videos, that in the Malhamat al-Kubra, when the Muslim lands are lost, um, and uh, the Ghazwa Hind occurs, Muslims take victory in Ghazwa Hind, and then we, uh, the Muslims will go back and liberate the Arab lands. So there's a <clears throat> mentioning of that from uh, this hadith perspective, which I think is important because it links some of the hadiths related to the black banners, um, how the uh, Muslims will be in a very bad situation at the time, uh, the black banners uh, arrive and uh, Imam al-Mahdi comes. Um, so uh, keep this uh, hadith, I guess, in mind as we're discussing today's topic. Um, and inshallah, uh, we'll get to an understanding where everything comes uh, together. Um, with reference to Ghazwa Hin, uh, there have been many narrations uh, in hadiths. Um, some of the more important ones that I have collected uh, we will go through them and uh, make an analysis and understanding about the events that are portrayed in these hadiths. Um, one of the first hadiths, uh, it's uh, um, narrates and it says, There are two groups of my ummah whom Allah will free from the fire. Uh, the group that invades India and the group that will be with Isa ibn Maryam. 
Now, some points to note here are the significance of what will happen to the people, uh, which is uh, will be freed from fire uh, or Jahannam. Uh, it's a big blessing of Allah upon those people. And then we've got the two different groups, which is the groups that invade India, and then we've got the groups that will be uh, with Isa ibn Maryam. Um, and then there is another narration, a uh, similar narration, which says, an army of yours will invade India uh, and Allah will grant its conquest to them until they bring their kings in chains and Allah will forgive them their sins. Then they will return and when they return, they will find the son of Maryam in Asham, <coughs> which is uh, modern day Syria. So in this uh, hadith, we again have uh, the importance of uh, the conquest or the war uh, that will happen against India and then we have a connection of uh, what will happen to those groups of people that will uh, then uh, meet uh, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam uh, once they finish up from India and it's elaborating that con contact that we have uh, in that group. Uh, we also look at uh, some of the narrations from the Sahaba uh, that have a uh, similar sort of message. Uh, and because these uh, narrations from the Sahaba, they're not <clears throat> directly from the Prophet, so uh, we take them as weaker narrations. But because the narrations are complementing the main hadiths, uh, they are considered to be sound uh, when, when we look at them all together. But anyway, from these two hadiths, it's reported by Abu Huraira. And Abu Huraira said that the Messenger of Allah uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam promised that we would invade india and if i live to that day i will sacrifice my myself and my wealth if i'm killed i will be one of the best martyrs and uh, if i come back i will be abu huraira al muharrar or the one who has been freed from the fire and uh, then we have another hadith which uh, also is on the same narrations but it also mentions the expedition to sindh sindh and india um, going on from these hadiths uh, and some of the other uh, narratives from the scholars that I have studied about Ghazwa Hind, uh, obviously this is a topic that uh, has been uh, debated very strongly in the past. Uh, just to clarify that the, the purpose of our videos is not to uh, engage our viewers into any um, activity that uh, or any grouping that would be uh, looked at from a negative perspective, we are informing about the uh, presence of the hadiths and how these hadiths connect to Muhammad Qasim's dreams. Um, because in the past, some of the groups have taken these hadiths as a recruitment strategy for their agendas. Uh, so this is not our purpose. Uh, purely, this is what we want to do from an educational point of view. Uh, and we want to make our viewers understand the message of the hadiths and how they connect to Muhammad Qasim's dreams. <clears throat> so based on the uh, conclusions that I have established uh, from the hadiths and the uh, discussions that uh, the scholars have presented, one thing that we can confirm is that the war or the conquest of Hind uh, bears a very strong or it's highly significant uh, in the future events that are to come. Uh, we can also uh, conclude that Ghazwa Hind will occur closer to the coming of Isa alayhi uh, salam and Dajjal based on some of the, uh, the hadiths that I have mentioned earlier. Uh, so the timing of Ghazwa Hind is very close to the timing of uh, the arrival of Isa alayhi salam and Dajjal. Uh, and this contradicts some of the opinions that people uh, have or the scholars have presented uh, where they say that the Ghazwa Hind has already occurred where there was a Muslim conquest under Muhammad bin Qasim and uh, some of the other Muslim leaders that have come in the past. Uh, but clearly, these hadiths are uh, mentioning about the events that will happen closer to the end of times when the arrival of Isa alayhi salam uh, and the Jal comes. So, Ghazwa Hind, although those conquests have happened before, but the Ghazwa Hind uh, in its essence will happen closer to these times. Then we also establish the importance of Ghazwa Hind, and this is an important uh, point to understand that the Ghazwa Hind the, is as important and as valuable as 
the war that Isa alayhi salam will have against the Jal. So we've got the two groups that will be freed from the hellfire. Uh, one is Ghazwa Hind, one is the uh, group that will be with Isa alayhi salam. Now we understand what Isa alayhi salam uh, will come to do. He will come to uh, kill the Jal. The Jal is the biggest fitna uh, that will come. We know that from our prophetic uh, hadiths from Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the fight that Isa alayhi salam has with Dajjal is the fight for the survival of Islam. Uh, because Dajjal is a fitna, he will spread uh, uh, disbelief uh, amongst humans um, and he will have the ability or the powers to be able to uh, get his message across to the people and there will be many people who will believe in him. So when Isa alayhi salam comes, he, uh, Isa alayhi salam will actually fight for the survival of Islam, which is for the true believers who will exist at that time. And Ghazwa Hin also bears that same importance, uh, which is that the Ghazwa Hin, based on the hadith that we have uh, studied, that the uh, both of the people uh, of those groups are freed from hellfire because Ghazwa Hin also bears that significance. It is going to be for the survival of Islam as well. Um, and uh, one thing that we have to understand that something that we can go back into hin into the history uh, and we look at the events in the history, one other time that the similar situation did occur in the past, it was at the time of Ghazwai Badr, uh, where the survival of Islam depended on the, uh, uh, the Ghazwa of Badr, the success of Muslims in that war, uh, established the uh, Islam to be uh, dominant in the region uh, and that was a very key uh, war that occurred during those times. We can also uh, make a conclusion that Ghazwa Hind, the Malhama, the uh, coming of the Jal and Isa al Islam, all of these events are connected and they will occur in some series um, and we can also then look at some of the other hadiths uh, that are narrated about the black banners um, and we can conclude that the Ghazwa Hind will be led by the army of black banners and Imam al-Mahdi himself. Now, the <clears throat> uh, hadiths about the black banners, uh, the Khurasan, the area of Khurasan, um, those hadiths do mention, and we have discussed this in our previous um, uh, videos, uh, those hadiths do mention that this group of people will go and it will liberate uh, the uh, Saudi Arab area or the Arabic area and then it will liberate uh, Islams all the way through Constantinople etc etc um, and this group of people if it uh, the Imam al-Mahdi is part of this group of people then Ghazwa Hind is going to occur during the time that the Imam al-Mahdi uh, is uh, also available or is also present in that time. Uh, so very important key understandings that we have uh, made from uh, the hadiths. Uh, now, when we look at Muhammad Qasim's dreams, particularly about uh, Ghazwa Hin, uh, we should perhaps look at uh, our summary of our previous discussions first so that you have a better understanding. Uh, we know from Muhammad Qasim's dreams that uh, he has established or he has mentioned that Ghazwa Hin he has seen this war to be the war for the survival of Islam. Um, and uh, this war, uh, after this war, war happens, uh, Muslims will go and liberate the lands in the Middle East. Uh, but while this war is happening or while the events of this war are coming close together, uh, by that time in the Middle East, the Malhama is ongoing and uh, two of the castles of Islam, Turkey and Saudi Arabia, are lost. Uh, we also uh, looked at the importance uh, of Pakistan and how Pakistan uh, changes before Ghazwa Hind. Uh, because Pakistan remains as the last castle of Islam uh, and there are significant important uh, reasons for why Pakistan exists and we have uh, looked at that in our previous video as well. Um, but Pakistan goes through uh, changes. So the current situation of Pakistan obviously does not indicate for Pakistan to be that way. But as Muhammad Qasim has seen that there is a change of leadership, that change of leadership implements true Islam in Pakistan. Uh, the Islam of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, 
uh, and they first go about by abolishing shirk from the community and when they do that Allah's rahmah comes and Pakistan starts to progress uh, in a very short amount of time. Um, now this this is the situation of Pakistan before Ghazwa Hin occurs. Uh, we also discussed the dream of uh, Muhammad Qasim where he saw uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who presented to him with a map of Khorasan and Pakistan, and in that dream, Muhammad Qasim saw that the black flags, uh, the black flags that are mentioned in the hadiths, they will come from Pakistan, and uh, the army of the black flags is actually the army of Pakistan. Uh, and Muhammad Qasim, uh, also we uh, discussed that Muhammad Qasim has seen that many Muslims will leave their countries and come into Pakistan as they see. Muhammad Qasim's dreams are coming true. They will come into Pakistan to establish Pakistan. Uh, but Muhammad Qasim's dreams about Ghazwa Hin specifically, uh, Muhammad Qasim has seen uh, that while Malhamatul Kubra is happening, Pakistan is progressing. Uh, the enemies uh, of Islam, uh, they see Pakistan as a threat. And at that time, they decide or they make a plan to destroy Pakistan as well as Turkey and Saudi Arabia would have already been destroyed. Uh, and this is why the, the war becomes important for the survival of Islam. Uh, now, keeping in mind that in the past, uh, Ghazwa Hind, as I mentioned, has been used as a tool to uh, create a political agenda uh, or uh, create uh, other uh, agendas to uh, basically hire, recruit people for uh, purposes that uh, haven't been pleasant, obviously, in history. Uh, but Muhammad Qasim has seen that the war is not uh, started by Pakistan. It is actually imposed upon Pakistan. Uh, because of the uh, growth of Pakistan and its development, uh, the uh, enemy uh, enemies around Pakistan or against Muslims at that time, uh, they actually impose this war upon Pakistan. And Pakistan actually defends itself. Muhammad Qasim has also seen that uh, in this war, uh, Pakistan actually faces an opposition of 80 to 100 uh, groups of countries that are on the other side against Pakistan. Uh, and then Muhammad Qasim has seen because people understand the importance of Ghazwa Hind, uh, they will come to understand or they'll come to know that this uh, event is not far uh, and Pakistan is the place where this uh, event will occur from or the black flags are in Pakistan, then many people will come to Pakistan. And uh, they come to Pakistan by, uh, Muhammad Qasim has seen that they even strap themselves onto the airplanes uh, to come into Pakistan. Now, the reason why many of these people will come to Pakistan is because they will witness uh, something uh, that is basically a miracle of Allah for uh, the Muslims. Uh, because Pakistan develops uh, or implements true Islam, uh, removes shirk, uh, one of the uh, miracles that come or one of the blessings of Allah that will come to Pakistan is that Pakistan will develop 3,000 black fighter jets. Um, and these black fighter jets will have uh, a technology that will uh, perhaps not exist at the time uh, or will not be known. Uh, in the uh, airspace or military. And uh, when Pakistan gets these uh, black fighter jets, this is when the uh, countries like India, uh, they go on the defensive instead of attack because uh, they cannot overpower the black fighter jets. And Mohammed Qasim has seen that these black fighter jets are actually uh, the reason how Pakistan delivers certain strategies uh, in Ghazwa Hind and it just begins conquering lands and it uh, takes over uh, India during the war or wins the war. Uh, and it is by the help of the black fighter jets. And obviously, army plays a role in it. Uh, but the uh, black fighter jets uh, are the main uh, help or tool that uh, enable victory for Pakistan. Uh, Muhammad Qasim also has seen that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu uh, uh, alayhi he takes part in this war and it happens secretly. The knowledge of this is uh, with the leaders of the country at the time or the commanders of that country. Um, now, how exactly this happens, whether it's in a spiritual form or physical form, uh, we are not really clear about that. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Uh, but we know that Allah, uh, Allah's power is kun fayakun. If Allah wills, anything can happen. Uh, so uh, there's a reason why this war has been titled with the name Ghazwa because it means or it entails that the presence of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam will be in this war. Uh, and whether Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam plays a strategy role or a military role or a spiritual role, we don't know about those clarities um, and uh, uh, Allah knows best. So it's best to leave leave those things at that. But Alhamdulillah, with the help of uh, the Black Fighter Jets and the uh, people that are in Pakistan, the Army of Pakistan, uh, and the people who defend Islam, Pakistan conquers all of India. Pakistan also conquers uh, Bangladesh and Afghanistan by Allah's mercy. Uh, and Muhammad Qasim has also seen that Indonesia and Malaysia, uh, they become allies of Pakistan uh, and they also support Pakistan in the conquest of uh, Ghazwa Hin and beyond Ghazwa Hin. Um, with the particular events of this war, Muhammad Qasim has seen that Muslims do not kill any children, uh, any old people or any women, or basically any, any person who uh, wants to make peace and gives uh, themselves up, uh, Muslims do not kill them. Uh, but it's only the people that are uh, actually raging the war, uh, being involved against Islam. Those are the ones that uh, uh, die in this war. Um, and uh, there's a figure that Muhammad Qasim has seen. Uh, it's about 80 crore. And now that figure, if we are to look at uh, in terms of uh, millions, that's about 800 million uh, Muhammad Qasim has seen that 800 million people die in this war. Um, now, that figure could be the Ghazwa Hind and Malhama combined. Uh, once again, we're not fully sure about this, but Muhammad Qasim has seen a dream in which uh, the number 800 million uh, was signified to him, uh, that these are the people that uh, die in this war. And after the uh, Ghazwa Hind finishes or uh, concludes, uh, Muslims then help the women and the kids and the el elderly that are left in, in the lands of India uh, and uh, they then get adopted as family uh, and they also accept or convert to Islam. Um, so these are the events of uh, Ghazwa Hin that Muhammad Qasim has seen in his dreams that the events that play out. Uh, but once this victory is taken by uh, Pakistan or the Muslims, um, then the Muslims will go and liberate the Middle East where the Malhamat al-Kubra is occurring. Um, and in those war wars, Muhammad Qasim has uh, seen many events. Um, we have discussed these in previous videos. Uh, but the concluding summary of those events is that uh, the Muslims then liberate uh, the areas in the Middle East uh, and they defeat superpowers like Russia uh, and USA and then the Muslims uh, or Pakistan at that time becomes the superpower um, and then it leads to an era where Islam is established uh, in uh, the entire world and there's a time of peace that comes um, and after that time of peace uh, there then comes the arrival of the Jal. Uh, now, in uh, the discussion that we have done so far, the events that we have described uh, in, in this video and the previous video that are related to the Malhamat al-Kubra uh, and the events of Ghazwa Hin and the uh, events of the uh, black uh, fighter jets and how they liberate the Muslim army uh, or the, how they liberate the Muslims in the Middle East. These events, we have been able to draw a conclusion that the hadiths make a very clear, distinctive connection to these events that Muhammad Qasim has seen in his dreams. Uh, and there is a great significance of how these events will happen as per Muhammad Qasim's dreams, not only because uh, the fact that they have a connection to the hadiths of Prophet Muhammad wasalam, but also because uh, we have seen that Muhammad Qasim's dreams about Imran Khan have come true exactly as he saw them. Uh, 
Uh, also, the dreams about uh, Palestine came true exactly as he uh, saw them. Uh, so these uh, events that have occurred uh, about Muhammad Qasim's dreams uh, exactly as he saw them, they indicate that the rest of his dreams will also come true, which is about the Ghazwa Hind, the Malhamat al-Kubra, and the uh, rise of Islam and rise of Pakistan in the future. Um, now, our next topic is uh, going to be about the uh, arrival of the Jal, and inshallah, next week we will cover uh, the topic in uh, as much detail as we can. We will look at some hadiths and the descriptions uh, in the hadiths about the Jal and the fitna of the Jal, and we will see what Muhammad Qasim has seen about uh, those events, inshallah. Uh, now, we'll look at some of the questions that uh, perhaps uh, some people have raised here. Um, let's have a look. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everyone who has wish assalamu alaikum. Uh, Urdu me video bana bana karo ya. Uh, sorry, bhai, maine ye pehle bhi bayan kiya hai apni previous videos mein ke hamari audience is channel ki uh, bahut si audience aisi hai jo Malaysia se hai, Indonesia se hai aur bahar ke mulk mulkon mein rehti hai. UK me bhi hai, uh, Arab mamalik me bhi hai, uh, Africa me bhi hai, uh, USA me bhi hai. तो हम ये वीडियोस इंग्लिश में इसलिए करते हैं कि जो मेजॉरिटी लैंग्वेज है इस चैनल की उनको अंडरस्टैंडिंग हो उसकी तो इस वीडियो के बाद जो है हम सबटाइटल्स भी इस पे अपलोड करते हैं तो आप बाद में आकर बेशक सबटाइटल्स देखें और वीडियो को अंडरस्टैंड करें इंशाल्लाह ये जब हमारे टॉपिक्स खत्म होंगे इसके बाद हम उर्दू सीरीज भी स्टार्ट करेंगे और उसमें हमारी डिस्कशन उर्दू में भी होगी आप सब के लिए इंशाल्लाह ओके अनदर क्वेश्चन अबाउट मेकिंग अ वीडियो इन उर्दू आई एम सॉरी इंशाल्लाह वी विल डिस्कस दोस उर्दू टॉपिक्स एस वेल but come back to have a look at the subtitles, inshallah. Yeah, Abbas Naseer, bhai, you know, yeah, kafi, uh, achhe comments bhi dal rahe hain, bure comments bhi dal rahe hain, lekin shukriya, aapne join kiya hume, uh, हमें बड़ा अच्छा आया बड़ा अच्छा लगा आ, बात आपकी सही है फिफ्टी व्यूअर्स हैं पाँच सौ से ज्यादा तो चाहिए चाहिए जजाकल्ला खैर आई एक्चुअली हैव पेप्सी एंड कोका कोला दे आर टू यू कैन यू कैन हैव बोथ इफ यू वांट Fazlur Rahman will do the bayat of the Jal. Brother, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Uh, Allah knows best. May Allah continue to guide all of us to the right path. Inshallah. Ameen. Allah Paak is pragam ko puri dunia mein phailai. Ameen. Ameen sum ameen. Um, thank you, Nizam. It's a very uh, important question that you asked. Uh, Kashmir will Kashmir be free before or after Ghazwa Hind? Now we discussed this in the in the last topic uh, and uh, the situation of Pakistan before Ghazwa Hind. When Pakistan is actually progressing, uh, it is that time that uh, Pakistan actually uh, liberates uh, Kashmir as well. So it is, as per the dreams or the indications from the dreams, it is actually before Ghazwa Hind that uh, Kashmir gets liberated. Okay. So I think there's uh, not many questions now. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, for joining us today. Inshallah, next week we will discuss about the topic of Dajjal. Um, thank you very much uh, for being uh, part of here. Please continue to share uh, the dreams of Muhammad Qasim to uh, the rest of the world. 
um, share it with your family, share it with your friends uh, and your colleagues. And most importantly, discuss about Muhammad Qasim retreats with your local scholars and ulamas. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, may Allah keep us all uh, safe in his uh, best of safety and bless us always. Ameen. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.